Kelvin Beecham is joining us in studio here on the Burns and Gambo Show. Again, he is leaving on Saturday to go to the African nation of Zambia to dig water wells. Uh, he's already built two in Zambia. He is looking for san- fan support for the third well. You can make your donation. Gambo and I have both donated. I did it during the commercial break. Thank World, you so much, you, fellas. Well, absolutely. Really appreciate it. Worldvision.org slash Beecham. Very easy. The whole transaction took 30 seconds. Worldvision.org org slash Beecham is where yeah. you can make that 25 donation. 25 bucks, 50, 100, whatever you can donate. Yep. Just help them build a well to help people get uh, water. Let's talk about you. Water. Let's talk about water. <laughs> I know. It's tough. My bad, I'm sorry. It's tough to get over. It's, no, it's fine. I, I you guys it. do the interview. I'll just sit back and we'll listen. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, okay, so there was some speculation at the end of the season that you might retire. That's not going to happen, yeah. right? You're playing football. Yeah. Why would what? you retire? You're playing at such a good level. Yeah, I, I don't level. know where that came from. Whoever where said did that, that come from? Whoever said that? I, 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 it's I, not like you're 40 years old. What are you, 33? 33. Yeah, you've had a seventh round pick. You've had a great career for yeah, a seventh round pick. I'm not slowing down anytime soon, man. If I get five more years out of this thing, I, f- I feel good about it. So, what's the process now for you? Are, are you are you waiting? Have you heard anything? I know it all starts next week. You're going to be in a foreign country when yeah, this yeah. all goes down. How's yeah. this going to work for you? You know, I train every single day. For me, the hay is already in the barn. The hay was put in the barn those 17 weeks during the season. What happens during the off season? people are going to make the decisions that they want to make. And they're going to assign the type of value to players in the manner that they want to assign that value. So it ain't really much that I can do right now. Um, you know, the calls come in. There's been some interest already. It's been quality interest, which I've been uh, pleased with and, 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 and very excited about. But at the end of the day, you know, we'll see what, what, what the offers actually entail, be able to look through those offers and find the best fit. I'm going to ask you because you've been in this league for a long time. You've obviously set yourself up. You've been good financially. You've done well. Is it, do you take the highest offer or is it about fit? The first thing that I'm optimizing for is do they have grass? You want to play on grass. I want to play on grass. How about the grass here? <laughs> I mean, it got, it got ripped in the Super Bowl. It wasn't your grass. The grass d- d- during yeah. the season was absolutely amazing. It was fine. It was okay. fine. Okay. okay. It was fine. So I don't know. I, I have no uh, insight on I, what happened during the Super Bowl. They tried to make it greener, and they put some other rye or something. Uh, I don't know what they you did. You know, our, our, our crew, the, the crew okay. that the Arizona Cardinals have had have been absolutely amazing. The grads at the facility, the grads at the stadium, okay. they've been absolutely amazing. So I don't know what happened in that particular. But that is your number one priority. That, I will go to a team that has an all-grass oh, yeah. field. That okay. would be amazing. Okay. Um, not to discredit that I would play on turf, which, you know, if I get an offer that it puts me on turf, so be it. But you ask, you know, what am I looking for, optimizing for? I would love to play on grass. My entire career I've played on grass. It's only been three years that I didn't play on grass. Are you hoping you'll be back? Expecting you'll be back? Do you, do you, how badly do you want to be back? With I the mean, it's, it's, it's about how bad do they want to have me back? You they, know? They, they're, I mean, you were their best. I mean, we've said this all. You were their best offensive lineman. You were adorable. You play. Hudson didn't play. I mean, I love Justin. Justin got hurt. Yeah. You were the most adorable guy. You're versatile. You can play different positions. Mm-hmm. I would imagine that. Listen, they're in a rebuilding process, though. Yeah. So, I mean, you're not going to be competing for a, for a Super Bowl next year if well, you the, came back the, here. The thing is, is at the end of the day, if you have an opportunity to compete, like, period. Because any given Sunday, you can do what's necessary to win games. And if you win enough games, you put your you put your, your hand in the, in, the, in the pile to be able to, you know, go to the dance, which is ultimately what you want to be able to do is be in the playoffs. But I think the opportunity to compete is what I enjoy the most. Now, can it be on a winning team or can it be on a losing team? It's been – I mean, we could have talked about this year. Prior to going to, th- to this year, we was expected to be in Good. the playoffs, You're in the playoffs and, last year. And, and, and make some noise. That's just not how the year went. And I've been on both sides of the equation where you came in with very, very high expectations and didn't meet them. I've been on teams where you came in with very, very low expectations and exceeded them. So I've been on both sides of the equation. And you can't really say in the offseason what a team is going to be, you know, mid-September. How difficult of a season was this for you? Not only Cliff being fired, mm-hmm. but, you know, one of your one of your coaches in, yeah. in, in Sean Kugler yeah. being let go. Yeah. How difficult – of a year overall was it for you and the team? Yeah, I think it was very difficult. And I think you have to look back at what happened prior to the season actually even starting. You had the situation with D-Hop. You had the death uh, of, of a teammate. You had the contract situation that was going on, you know, with... Uh, Tyler. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was a lot going on prior to training camp even starting 
which, you know, that takes away from the camaraderie, that takes away from the fabric, I feel, of the locker room. And then when you get into the season, you had, you know, coaches that, that were that were leaving. You had coaches that got let go. I mean, you had the stuff with Sachs. You had the stuff with, with Shump. You had the stuff with, you know, Cougs. I mean, you had the stuff with the GM. I mean, all those things start to add up over time. How hard knocks. Give me one. What's the, <laughs> what, do you, what did they miss? Give me something that, oh, man, if this would have been on, it would have been, what did they miss? Oh, Give me something man. they missed. The thing is, is I know Mr. Dalton is listening right now, so I got to be careful with how I say this. Um, but they missed quite a bit. <laughs> okay, give me one. Okay, give, give, me, give me an example. Oh, man. Oh, man. Anything during the season. You're like, oh, I'm glad that didn't make it on. Oh, I'm glad that didn't make it on. Well, the thing is, is you don't see everything, you know, because you're in different locker rooms, different camera angles, the whole nine. Uh, but just hearing stories about what would go on in the locker room and what would go on in different rooms and knowing that, you know, everybody, you say you're not watching Hard Knocks, but you're actually tuning in to watch it. And even if you're not actually sitting down to watch, you watching it on your phone or you yeah. happen to hear about it or somebody happens to send it to you. Um, but it's hard to say, like, what the one thing was that was coming out of that locker room with all those cameras in the locker room. It's hard to just point it like one thing. Right. What, what impressions do you have of the new GM, of the mm-hmm. new coach, of the new regime? I mean, what any impression at all? Of yeah, the I, haven't, I haven't had a lot of time to spend time with them. But, you know, one thing that I enjoy about – uh, Monty and his upbringing and even what he's talked about in, in the, the short conversations we've had is the process, which I think in, in any field, if you have a process, you're able to go back to that when things are either good or when things are bad. And if you look at how he's done things um, in New England, how he did things in Tennessee, it's always been about a process, and he's bringing that process orientation into the building, which I'm, I'm really excited to see whether I'm here or not, but I'm really excited to see that conversation and that, that mindset around process to be something that's instilled in, in the culture moving forward. What do they need to do to, to get competitive? Give me one or two things like we need to get better in these areas. It's all about the trenches, point blank. Offensive line, defensive line. Offensive line, defensive line, point blank. If you want, if you, okay, here's an example. Oh, I, I don't disagree with you at all. Yeah. We totally agree. Look at look at the Super Bowl. That was the best version of offensive line play that I've they, seen. They, they blocked Philly at four guys with ten sacks. They didn't let him touch them. Both sides. Both, both sides. Both sides. But both. Philly had ten, four guys with ten sacks. True. But I'm saying both both sides. Like I'm just talking about just the, the the competence on both sides and the competition on both sides and the the clean pockets on both sides of the equation. That was that was great to have and great to see. So for me, that is where it starts and ends is the trenches. If you focus on the trenches and you build from the inside out. You have the ability to be consistently in some of those games and, and, and hopefully being able to do just enough to, to win the game. Were you surprised by the National Football League Players Association report card on the Cardinals? Were, was it par for the course for you in terms of the grade the Cardinals got? What, what was your reaction when that came out last week, Kelvin? Yeah, I didn't know to the extent where our facility sat in comparison with a number of other facilities. Um, you know, I've had conversations and, you know, people ask about, you know, what do you think about the facility? It's functional. It's functional. You would do what you need to do and you have what you need to have to be successful. But like anything, if you're a competitor, I think you want to find ways to improve and you want to find ways to get that constructive feedback and that constructive criticism, you know, to improve. Now, did I think it was going to be hitting the cover of Wall Street, Wall Street Journal and USA Today and all those things. I don't think anybody saw that coming. Um, and it just kind of snowballed from there. But I think with, with anything, you want to find ways to improve. And I think as a player, you find ways to improve. You take that constructive feedback and criticism. And I think with, with this particular report that came out, I think that there's an ability to have growth and you know an opportunity to, to challenge that norm and find a way to fix it and rectify it. Will it hurt their ability to attract free agents? If you had never played here and you were a free agent right now and you <laughs> saw that they got a bunch of Fs in a lot of categories, would it affect your ability? Would you not look at Arizona? You know, it's, it's at the end of the day, I think when you have and you're young, it's about getting as much money as you can while you can. And, you know, you have the issues with a weight room or you have the issues with rats in your locker room. Like, I think you're just finding ways to get paid and you're finding a way. You can deal with a whole bunch of stuff. As like, long as the money's coming in. As long as the money's coming in. If we're just being honest. Like, it's no, just, it's, it's just, you're just, not wrong. Yeah. No, just being honest. Like, yeah. You're going to find a way if somebody's going to put an offer in front of you that's $40 million. Like, you're telling me, hey, 
Or oh, because the weight room bad, I don't want to take that $40 million. Like, all right, I go, I go work out outside. I go work out like... <laughs> I'll build a workout room you know, in my house. Build, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so right, it's like, yeah. you know, is, is, does it... Does it does it look bad? Does it sound bad? Yes. Is there a way in which to, to, to rectify it? Yes. Will it discourage guys from wanting to play football? Because at the end of the day, it's about playing football. Will it discourage guys from wanting to play football? I don't think so. But I think it is good to have that information as you're thinking about the decision that you're going to make. Do you think this will give the organization the opportunity for growth to kind oh, of question. acknowledge what's wrong question. and work from question. that? Yeah? Mr. Mr. Bitwell is a competitor. You know, he takes this and he's going to run with it and he's going to find a way to be much better at what he does. I mean, he's a pilot the pilot is he continues to innovate and and, and get better at what he does and he's not going to just take this see this and be like oh, i'm not gonna do nothing about it i think he will find a way to improve and again i think all these owners are super competitive at the end of the day like i mean look at the stadiums you know you had jerry's world and then you had vegas and then you had they they try to one-up each other in every single fashion I think this is just going to be another opportunity for them to upgrade their facilities and kind of compete at that particular level um, leave, of leadership. Leave me with this on Kyler. There's a lot of criticism of Kyler. Mm-hmm. What does he have to do, in your opinion, to be great? Grow up. Give me an example. Be a man and grow up. Like it's not, it's not complicated. You got to be a leader of men. Period. And he's not right now. He's maturing. But he's not there yet. He's not there. It's not, it's not, there a, yet. It's not a completed process. It's not, it's not a completed process. Be it's, a leader of men. He's got all the tools, you think? He has all the tools, man. If some guy can throw off one leg, he can you know, throw it a mile, he can run faster than anybody else on the field. He just lacks the leadership. He's put together. I didn't say he lacks the leadership. I just think he needs to grow up a little bit. Um, and I think if he has the ability and the willingness to grow up, he's going to be just fine. Um, they paid him for a reason. They paid him because of his talent. And he has the ability to lead. It's just... When you're in that position, we need you to lead more. Like, you're the face of the franchise. You got to lead more. You got to lead in every single capacity of leadership. Um, and that's what they look for out of a franchise quarterback. They've given you, you know, half a billion. Like New coaching staff may be able to push him in a different way than the old coaching staff did. We'll see. We'll see. Kyle is his own individual. He's his own person. He beats his own drum, which has made him what he is today. But at the end of the day, you have to be able to lead an entire organization you got to lead a team and there's a lot of weight on his shoulders I mean he's young but that's that comes with the territory and that comes with being a franchise quarterback for the Arizona Cardinals you're tasked with being that leader Enjoy the Suns game tonight. You didn't know. You didn't know you were going to it's Kevin KD. Durant's. He had no idea. You just you just got tickets to go see the Suns. Yeah, oh man, and no idea. It was had, Kevin Durant? Had no idea, oh, man. 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 I was just trying to take my wife out and and you know trying to get some brownie points, man. You know, <laughs> well, you're gonna get some brownie points tonight. <laughs> Kevin Durant's making his home debut for the Phoenix Suns. That's, that's, that's some brownies. There's no doubt about that. Kelvin is headed to build water wells in Zambia with World Vision, and I'll let you tell everybody about it. But first, welcome to our studio. Thanks for coming in. It's good to see you. How have you been? Been great, man. Thanks for having me. This is special. This I, is I, always special. We get to actually come and see the people who are actually talking about you. Actually, so. yeah. <laughs> well, we've had John several times over the years. We've been yeah, with the Cardinals for a few years now. But this is great. And to give you the opportunity to to talk about this is amazing. I mean, last year it was emergency kits that yep. you did with World Vision. Yep. And now it's, you know, wells. One well. 2,800 gallons of water yes, sir. helps 300 people. You are really from New York. I am from New York. Say water, say water again. Water. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him how to say Iowa. Say Iowa. Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> this is not about me. This is not about me. People say, can you say, can I have a quarter for some water for my daughter? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Dr. Pepper in Iowa. Yeah, he's... he's... <laughs> I've been here since 97. And, and the slang is not left yet. I was like 30 when I moved. So like, it's like, I, I didn't move when I was a kid. Like if I was five or six, I wouldn't have an accent. But yeah. I moved here when I was like 30 years old. So I guess I still have an accent. <laughs> My can bad. I get? Can I get back my to bad, the water? My bad. My bad. Go can ahead. I get back oh, to the well? I mean, yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's my fault. I'm sorry. Kelly, yeah. You're fine. You're fine. You can, you can do whatever you want with us. <laughs> this but isn't we... rip on Gambo. I mean, <laughs> uh, Gambo. I, I'm, I'm Every bro- day is rip on Gambo day. Every day. <laughs> All right. So Go tell ahead. me about. Tell me about. Listen, we take it as a, for sure. We take it for granted. We take it for granted, yes, man. We do. Clean water every single day. Yes. You know, bottled bottled yes. waters and just yeah. drink it out of the New York. We drank out of the hose. Yeah. Same here in Texas. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's it's incredible to have that, but there's so many people that don't have clean water. You're yeah. trying to just, I mean, a simple necessity, a, a simple basic, thing that- A basic human need. Basic human need. Yes. 
giving people proper water to drink. Yes. Tell me about it. You know, had the opportunity to go to Honduras a couple years ago, um, 2016. Just wanted to go and see how other people lived. I mean, it's one thing when we go and travel as athletes during the off season and just go and enjoy. But when you go in and, and, and see that type of poverty and you see that, you know, it's not a, Hey, let me get you. Let me get you access to a food bank, or hey, let me, you know, let me pay your pay your rent, or, or or get your rent paid, or hey, let's find a way to get a job. You have young ladies and young women that are walking miles and miles just to go get water, and then if you hope that the water is clean, the thing is, it's over 800 kids daily, under five, are dying from diarrhea, malnutrition, because of access to water. So you know, in in America, yes, we have this hunger epidemic that's going on. But at least we have access to a bottle of water. And some of these countries and some of the places across the planet, they don't have access to water. So I wanted to not just talk about it, not just throw money at it and throw it up against the wall and hope that something is done. But, you know, be intentional. Be very direct with the, with the capital that we're giving and then also go and actually see it. And not only see it, but actually make sure that the well is pumping. I want to see the well with my own. I want to see it working. I want yeah. to see it working. I want to see how it actually works. How it impacts the community. What does it? What does the community want? They want water. All right. Well, is this the water that you want? And then not only the water that you want. How do we ensure that you? There's proper hygiene and there's proper sanitation around it because it's a lot that comes with water for that particular community. Water for for many countries in this particular respect, it's like oil. It's like gold. It's it's that's amazing. How do we find a way to ensure that, you know, some of the feet, some of the folks here in Zambia have access to that? So I'm excited to go. My, me and my wife are going. So it's going to be good for us to be able to serve the community um, and serve this particular community, um, you know, over the next week or so. You've already built two. Is this your first time going there? I mean, I know you've already built two. So, have you been there previously so or is this I was, your first trip? I was there in 2020 okay. for vacation. Like we went to South Africa. We went to... Kruger National Park. We went and saw Victoria Falls, but you have Victoria Falls, and you walk over the bridge, and you're in Zambia, and you realize that you know you look at the cattle. I'm like, I got cattle. Ain't no cattle look like that. <laughs> <laughs> they look like they're starving. Yeah, <sighs> look like dust. I mean, you go touch them, they might fall over. Like, ain't no cattle look like that. But when you don't have access to water, it's it's it supplies the economy it, it supplies everything everything is run through water you have to have water to feed yourself you have to have water to feed your animals all right well once you have water then you can actually sell your animals yeah and then once you sell your animals you get a cut from selling your animals and then you're able to reinvest that in into your family sure. into, into your business what have you but to see a cow like that in zambia so we have a lot of listeners yeah. right now yep. they can help build a well Yes, right now. If they can help to. right now. They can help you right. build a well in Zambia right now. This very moment. How? Uh, Worldvision.org backslash Kelvin Beecham, or you can go to Twitter, or LinkedIn, or Instagram, or Facebook, and on my page you will see the link. Um, so if I go to Kelvin Beecham's page on Instagram, Instagram right I mean now. on I mean on Twitter. I'm on Twitter right on now. On Twitter, Twitter is in the bio. The there link it is, is in worldvision.org, okay? Yep, there it is. So right on the Twitter page, you can go to Kelvin Beecham, help drill a clean water well with Kelvin Beecham Jr. Donate to this campaign, and you can click and donate right now. Right now. If you wanted to, and if it doesn't make sense for you, I solicit your prayers. If you know how to pray, pray for me and my wife as we go over to Zambia. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to donate while we're talking right now. Look at that. Hey, that's powerful. See, you I'm going to be dragging on them like that. You I'm going to donate right, right. I'm gonna donate right now while we're talking. See, the thing is, I say what I say to him, and mm -hmm. it's it's all, it's just, he's a good guy. He's a great dude. He, he's a good guy. We don't guy. want people to know but, that. But, but, but honestly, if we do that, it's really bad radio. So we just pretend he's not a good guy. It's all part of kind of the deal. I got you. He's actually, don't want it going to his head. I got you. He's actually a decent guy. He's just got to. Don't tell people that. It ruined my reputation. <laughs> uh, March 10th is when you're going, right? So I'm leaving this uh, Saturday, okay, Sunday. That's... One of the two. It's like we, we were overnighting. So, I mean, it's, I haven't looked at the itinerary. I, my wife is, she's done the, the heavy lifting. Like, well, I, I call mine the decision maker. There's she, there's a reason why. The flight right? is booked. I just know we're good. So I got a, my daughter's birthday is Saturday. So I know we're leaving after Saturday. Okay. So it's probably going to be Saturday night or, or sometime Sunday. So once again, it's... How long does it take to drill a well? That's a great question. You don't know. Don't know. You, you, you got to stay there for as long as it takes, huh? Yeah. But the thing is, is I, what I found is, as much like, you know, people know that I do a lot of investing, you know, in, in, in early stage technology. I wanted to go find who is the best person to drill a well and how do you make sure it's sustainable? 
And I looked at all the research from a number of different entities across, you know, the, the, the world um, and found out that World Vision has the best drilling process. And not only a drilling process, how do you make sure that this extends, not for 10 years, not for 20 years, but for the next 100 years? Because, again, it's about the sustainability yeah. of making sure that water continues to, to, to flow in and throughout that community. There it is. Thank you for making the donation to help drill a clean water well with Calvin Beecham. The funds we raise together go fund our mission. We couldn't do it. Uh, our work without the generosity of people like you. So there it is. There I can download is. my receipt. So I encourage people to go to your Twitter page, Calvin Beach, and right there, right in your body. You just click on it. It takes you right there. And you yeah. can donate 25, 50, 75, 100 bucks, whatever you can to help people have clean water. Let me give out the website again, worldvision.org slash Beecham or Kelvin Beecham, yep. right? And that'll take you right take there you right for the it. donation page. Yes, sir. Okay, cool. Hey, best of luck with the trip. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I hope the fundraising yeah. goes very, very well. What you're doing is amazing stuff. Thank you for sharing your story with us and your plans with us, and I hope our audience gets behind you as well. We appreciate you coming in here for a whole half hour. We really anytime, do. Anytime, anytime. Thanks so much for having me. You got it.